This episode of Montreal by Night contains violence, coarse language, and mature themes. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome guys, gals, and non-binary pals to your favorite Twilight fan series. Welcome to Montreal by Night. This is your intrepid storyteller, Tyson Fraley. As always, we have Ethan Jonah. Hello, hello. We have Brenton Edwards. Hi, peeps. And last but certainly not least... Takeshi Fukushima. I am contractually obligated to be here. <laughs> wow. Salt King it is. So I had a fantastic day then, I'm assuming, Salt King Takeshi. Yes, I have just been negotiating contracts with people for my various media appearances, which, as you all know, are many and various. You are the, like, fourth most popular voice actor of our time. I mean, obviously, yeah. Like, uh, you know, Kevin Michael Richardson, take a hike. Oh, I just meant in the TTRPG world, even, your fourth most popular. It goes, it goes Laura Bailey, Brenly Mulligan, Matthew Mercer, Takeshi Fukushima. And don't forget all of the other numerous art pieces that Takeshi Fukushima provides to the world. I believe that there's multiple paintings, photography, esoteric uh, works of art that seem to delve into the madness and uh, sometimes perverse and strangely sexual nature of the universe. I mean, Dark Dice wanted to get him, and we, we got him instead, and they had to go with Jeff Goldblum. Just a absolutely second rate. <laughs> yeah, second best. Uh, you know, it's, it's very niche. That's why you had to scrape the bottom of the bucket with uh, with Brenton and I, because you, you couldn't afford more talent. <laughs> you couldn't afford more talent like talk. That's why we're bankrupting Three Kings Loot by paying Takeshi Fukushima's uh, essentially acting costs. Yeah, really sorry you're going to be out of a job soon, Tyson. That sucks for you. Ah, well. Yeah, terrible for me. Let's take a quick recap of what happened. Uh, So, last time, uh, for our dear adventurers, the party split off after discovering what was in Frederick Lake's basement, uh, finding his family sadly deceased uh, within. Taliesin decided to go and look for a katana at a 24-hour pawn shop, and sadly found nothing to that avail but other than a business owner who was happy and adamant of him buying some fantasy memorabilia. Nakano and Asher then headed to St. Columba House, where they were able to set up shop in the basement, uh, Taliesin arriving soon after. You guys slept inside of the storage closet before heading out into the night once again, at which point some of Taliesin's herd was able to collect a series of well, of Katana for uh, Taliesin and also a large, some sort of tome spellbook. Uh, Taliesin gave these items as gifts to Asher and Nakano. Uh, you guys then decided to, instead of pursuing Frederick Lake directly, uh, to gather th- some intel and some equipment by going off to deal with the prism situation. You guys headed up into Hoshalaga, where the shipping yards are located, from which uh, the group spotted a few strange-looking wolves that were scoping out the area. Eventually, it was revealed that these wolves were Guru, who have also taken interest in this prism site uh, by the name of Richie and Wash. They then led you to their leader, Bo, who, with Asher, has set up a tenuous partnership is the word i'm looking for in order to potentially in the future lead to some peace between vampires and the guru here located in the city the partnership hinged hinged on two things the first being how well this uh, attack on prism goes and the return of a special karn at the top of mont royal back to the guru as you guys agreed and then began to head towards the prism site, that is where we left off. So, you guys find yourself on the fence leading into the shipping yards. Looking inside, you can see the numerous armed guards doing the general walk around 
tonight, what would you like to do? All right. In that case, I am going to activate my unseen passage. Uh, so I'll roll a rouse check for that. Roll that rouse. Uh, that's a success. All right. So I will suddenly vanish from view, turned invisible, and I suppose I would like to try and climb the fence and get into the complex. Please make a... Oh, sorry. Our, our plan was for us to cause a distraction as you go in, Nakano. That was my understanding. Yes, okay. I just wanted to confirm. Alright, can I turn invisible and climb up the fence now? Nakano, please make a dexterity athletics check. Excellent. Uh, that's two successes. As you dash up this fence, you flip yourself over as you touch the side of it, and you feel this tingling sensation in your hand as your fist grabs around it, and you're kind of hooked there for a moment by your own hand just strangely impulsively grabbing before you have to pull yourself flipped over the other side as some of your clothes you feel get torn and ripped slightly from the barbed wire at the top. Uh, you do take one point of superficial damage. As this, as you look at your hand and you can see that the wire has caused a slight set of burns into your hand, uh, like an electrified fence. <sighs> uh, I'm still next to the fence, so like my peeps are right next to me, basically. Pretty much. I am going to lean into the fence and I'm going to say, <sighs> Something's different about this fence. Burned me. Uh, what is what is locking the gate? Make a quick intelligence investigation check. While he's doing that, can I see if there's like a power box on the wall or something like that? That would be powering the fence, basically. For you, Talison, make a wits awareness check. Uh, six successes. One of them is a messy critical. And then, yeah, I got uh, three successes. You begin to look around and you don't see any kind of, like, blocking off kind of section for where the fence goes. You see that there is the main building and the fence just seems to go in every direction around it. There's no, like, perimeter section where the fence has to open up. Essentially, you'd have to walk in through the main section of the building to be able to get to the other side. That seems to be the only accepted, quote-unquote, way in or out. And kind of pointed out by Talison, you're looking across the entire space, and you spot that on the other side of the fence, connected to the main actual building itself, you can see what looks to be an electrical box that has connected to the fence uh, that seems to be charging and pulsing the electric current through it. And Asher, as you're kind of investigating all this, you feel the slight tinge on your fingers as you feel this aggravation kind, kind of beginning to kick in as you have just brushed your hand. You don't take any damage, but that annoyance and grievance is beginning to kind of get to you. I am going to take out a glass vial, the type of which I normally like store blood or whatever in for my rituals, and I'm going to uh, fill it with uh, my corrosive vitae. There's a specific amount of blood that you can take out per rouse check. Each rouse check corrodes approximately 35 centimeters of matter in all directions. Okay. Uh, do you want to make a big enough hole for all of you to be able to slip through? I want to pass the vial to Nakano through the fence so that he's able to access that utility panel without having to smash it open. Ah, very clever. Okay, uh, in which case, just make one rouse check. Success. Okay, you slice open the palm of your hand as from one of your vials, this thick black viscousy fluid pours into the glass vial as it almost seems to hiss and bend, uh, almost warping the glass a little bit as you successfully stopper it uh, and are able to slip it uh, in between the chain links of the fence. Nakano, if you cut the power, we will join you inside. Uh, 
it is up to you whether you deem it appropriate to cut the lights as well. All right. And I will take the vial and I will make my way over to the the power box. Okay. Uh, Please make a dex plus stealth plus obfuscate check. Uh, That'll be six successes. Hot damn. You quietly begin to move in between the different massive uh, metal containers going from side to side. You creep along, heading to the far side of the wall, at which point there's a slight gap that you see there's a few guards kind of standing by. Also from this close, you would see that there are two figures, not wearing the regular of the guard garb, as it were. You can see that one of them, relatively tall, brawn looking leather jacket, uh, gray undershirt, and it almost looks like a military kind of uh, cropped hair. Uh, The other one you can see long dark hair, woman, seems to be in some sort of like khaki uniform kind of talking amongst each other Uh, either both smoking or both sharing a cigarette as they both kind of are talking amongst themselves you watch as they both turn and head inside as you watch these two head inside you watch as the guards kind of keep an eye on them slightly and at which point you use that opportunity to dive to the other side of the wall where you now have full access to the power uh the power panel okay In that case, I am going to unstopper the corrosive vitae and use that to melt through uh, the lock or or any uh, protection I suppose it would have. Uh, Very easy. You pull it off, begin pouring as the lock sizzles. The padlock burns to nothing but a crisp before you flick it, falls off, and you open it. Inside, you see a lot of wires, cables. Uh, you see some breakers. Uh, aside from that, I'll say um, make an intelligence technology check. That's what I was hoping you'd say. That's uh, three successes with a, with a bloody critical or messy critical. I always forget which is which. All right. Uh, You look at it. You can definitely knock out the power to the fence. You're not sure what else you would be able to knock out with this panel specifically. Okay. Um, In that case, I'm... For my first move, I will just remove... I will just stop power to the fence itself. Okay. You flip the breaker... You don't hear anything. Nothing seems to change much. Uh, But as you do this, uh, Taliesin and Asher, you feel this kind of almost energy where like the the hair on the back of your arms would normally stick up. You feel that kind of energy just die. Shall we get moving then? Should we split up some through here, some through the main gate? Certainly. Do we want... Ask him to do it one way, the guru through the gate, so do we want to split some uh, vampire, you know, a mixed team then? Kindred and guru? What do, you, what do you think? If the two of you seem to be more of the talkative sort, maybe we hop the fence, pick off some people from behind, you see what you can do by just walking through the front door? If you think that wise, of course. I'm sure I could manage. I think that Taliesin may be better off at that alone, in all honesty. Unless you'd rather the backup. I mean, I can certainly give that a go. Uh, On the front gate, how many people were there when we were uh, observing it? Uh, Looking at the front, you... There is no specific uh, gate. It looks like it's more of a storage house slash garage. There's no one on the outside currently, but there is what looks to be, from what you saw previous, the garage and both the front doors seem to have a key pass access. We could take someone here on their next round and take their key card. Good idea. And then I can certainly go through the, through the front door. It should be no problem for me to change my gait and manner of walking to be more appropriate to the uh, guardians of this building. 
All right, next person we see then, we'll take their key card. I will, once they come into range, I will cause their mind to fog up. Bo, Richie, Wash, if you want to take them down then, as silently as you can. You can see Richie just kind of stretches a bit. All right. <sighs> Sounds like a plan. All right. I'm going to get ready to cloud memory. All righty. You watch as Bo, Richie, and Wash all go into their lupus form or their dog wolf form as they each and free jump over the fence landing to the other side you see Richie with the similar like reddish brown kind of uh, fur with the three legs wash with the grey fur uh, and Bo which you had never seen transform before is a looks like a winter wolf with just the white uh, fur from end to end as they just go to the other side and begin traveling amongst start traveling across with the cargo crates. Uh, is this a chain link fence, Tyson? It is. How many links would I have to melt through to make a hole for the two of us? You'd need, like, as far as, far as Rouse checks are considered? Like that, or do you mean, like, actual measurement? Yeah, like Rouse checks. Uh, you'd probably need to make about... If you wanted to start from, like, the ground, per se... And if you just wanted to make the smallest hole possible to be able to accommodate you, you guys would just have to crawl under. I'd say two. So I'm thinking I want it to be, I don't want it to be immense, but I do want it to be obvious enough that someone stops there to investigate. Ah, okay. So imagine, imagine me cutting myself and like splashing the, the uh, corrosive blood in like a triangle to try to cut a to cut try and cut a triangle out of it from the ground up to a higher point. Understood. Uh okay. I'd say in that case, four. Three successes, one failure. Okay. So your hunger only increases by one as you slice uh that same spot in your hand again as this time you grab the flesh in your palm, pull as the black fluid scatters across the entire section of this chain link as the metal corrodes, breaks apart, and falls to the ground. Uh, Nice hole for both you and Talison to walk through, Uh, but even better, very ostentatious and... uh, Sorry, not ostentatious. That's the wrong word. Very apparent and is going to be a nice... uh, thing for a guard to have to stare at realizing oh shit is i i was hoping like are there boxes and stuff in the way between the post and this section of the fence or anything uh no boxes per se but on the other side there are like scattered items like open crates that have already uh been searched through like there are wooden pallets that are kind of set up with crates my hope was that the hole would be apparent to a guard going around on patrol, but not apparent from a distance. Yeah, no, that sounds about right. It, it's not big enough that someone from more than 30 feet is going to clock it. Okay, in that case, uh, I'm going to I'm gonna get in that wooden box, the big wooden crate, and I'm going to hold cloud memory. Sounds good. You're gonna full solid snake this. I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of pull out the the sword from my guitar neck, sword ready, and then a uh, um, a pistol in my off hand. I'll say Talison, make a. I'll allow you to make either a, a dexterity stealth check or a either intelligence or wits stealth check uh, to strategize the best position. Definitely dex stealth. Would you like me to roll for stealth as well? Uh, yes, please. Uh, make yours either wits or intelligence stealth. Three successes. Uh, three successes as well for me. At which point, as you guys kind of get into position, Nakano, uh, you are still at the box. Is there anything else you would like to do while you're there? Um, how many other switches are there on the box? Uh, there are two. Uh, two in total or two more after the one I had already flipped? Two more. I'll try flipping the second one. Uh, the second one. 
You flip it. Uh, as you watch as the lights from inside the building go out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to try flipping that switch back, flipping those lights back on. Okay. <laughs> the lights go back on. Nikano sort of gives a, hmm, well, how about that? Sort of, sort of look, and he is going to, uh, maintaining his unseen passage, he's going to make his way back to where those two guards were, uh, were standing before. And I am going to get into position relatively near them, and I would like to take one of Talison's kitchen knives, and I would like to throw it, I'd say like past me, like at a at a storage container or something, just so that they are, they're not looking at me, but they're looking in my direction so I can sort of see their faces. Ah, uh, okay. Um, please make a dexterity melee. Dirty melee. Okay. That's seven successes, a messy critical. Jesus. Okay. You pull the kitchen knife out, flick it, as you've thrown it a little bit harder than you were expecting. Just the scent, like just the, the aggravation of the burn on your hands and just the smell of blood from these two. You flick it harder than you were expecting as it and actually embeds itself about an inch into the actual metal of the storage container as it just as you see the two guards immediately turn to the position and begin pulling out uh, what looked to be submachine guns and just kind of look to each other Uh, at which point the door opens uh, from the inside, as you see that the woman with the khaki outfit kind of steps out, kind of looks to the both. You! Check the power box. We were getting a power surge in here earlier. We can't let that shit happen again. Do you understand me? Uh, would would I recognize anything about this woman now that I can sort of see her better? Is, is it Capaldi? This is not. Uh, you don't recognize anything immediately make a uh make a wits awareness check just to get specifics off of her okay can i also throw in um sense the beast for that sure uh you activate sense the beast you do not sense the beast in any of these individuals okay solid uh in that case one, two, three, four. Uh, four successes. Four successes. Uh, the figure is definitely, definitely military. Hard to tell exactly what, like, military outfit. Uh, if you were to take a guess, probably U.S. military. Okay. Uh, I would like to make my way over to where she's standing because I would like to um, try to follow or either follow her back into the office she was in or just get into the office myself while the door's open. Okay. Uh, I will need you to make a dexterity athletics check uh, to be able to essentially to get to the stealthiest position to be able to get inside you'll have to do a little bit of a perimeter jump, kind of hopping between containers to get to the other side of her to slip inside. Otherwise, you're going to be looking straight into the light of one of the guards with the weapons. Uh, That'll be three successes. Three successes, okay. You are heading essentially to the left, climbing upwards, hopping between a few of these containers. As you see... The woman begins to head back inside as the two guards, they kind of split into different directions. One of them heads from where you were just at, heading towards the box. The other one heads towards you where you threw the knife. As you are heading to that position, essentially right above where you had thrown the knife and it impacted, 
the guard looks to the knife, looks confused, and kind of panics, like, looking suspicious around, and looks up, catching you in the light. However, as you see them begin to reach back to, essentially, to speak into their walkie-talkie, there's a flash before you hear as there's suddenly a dark figure below you with this massive series, essentially three inch, what look to be nails or claws that literally just stick into this guy's chest, lifting him up over, over the head and then quietly dropping it behind them. As the figure looks up to you, nods and you continue traveling to the other side of the door uh, at which point you you arrive at the door uh, at this position you're a little bit out in the open uh, you do see other guards that are walking around the area you're not going to want to spend too much time here okay so I am like in front of a door into the office uh, you said you said there were four guards or did I just totally imagine that number uh, there were two guards that were at the essentially where you were looking down there were two other people that had stepped out but they went back inside from this position you now see to your left there appear to be four other guards that are beginning to look look around a little bit more suspicious okay hey while i'm here i'll take another one of talison's kitchen knives and i would like to throw it past the four guards to make them look in the opposite direction from me. Okay. Uh, make another dexterity melee check. Not very good. That's only one success. One success. You throw the knife as it lands about halfway to the actual boxes and just hits the open space where just ding 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 as all four guards turn towards it look confused amongst themselves and then begin to look into the different directions where one is turning towards you. It's also about this point that you hear from the other side, uh, essentially to your right, where the power box is, that you hear a shit. We've got company. Keep your eyes open. I'm gonna run into the office. Would I have been within close enough range of the power box that I would have seen that guy walk towards it? I'm trying to think, does it state a range for cloud memory? No, it does not. Uh, They just have to be able to hear me. I have to say forget, and they have to hear me. So they're probably too far unless I want to yell. Hey! Hey! Forget! (laughs) Oh, man. I can imagine that being a character. Hey! (laughs) Forget about it. Yeah, no, I will still wait. If our cover's blown, they're going to patrol and come check out the fence. So, Nakano, as you go to open the door it it's locked Uh, fuck windows uh none at this point uh if you would like to make a dexterity larceny check you can potentially pick the lock i'll do that uh that's three successes uh you kind of work with with the side of it before you feel the door unlock as you open the door uh, I do need you to make a dexterity athletics check. Okay. Uh, one success. Uh, you take you take four points of superficial damage, as the one that it was heading from the center position goes contact. <laughs> and begins to fire on your position. The door, as you open it, splinters as the bullet bounces off, but some of it nicks across your shoulder as it seems that at the very least, this one has spotted you. Okay, I'm I'm in the office. Are the two military types in there as well? Uh, you're looking down the hall to a hallway uh, that seems to have a door to the left, to the right, and then go to a T-junction. You can see the woman in the khaki outfit is at the end of the tea hall, turns towards you, and is just looking at you like, like just more out of shock. All right, I want to I wanna try and close the distance between, between me and her as quickly as possible. So, uh, I'll say, Nakano, please make a 
Please make another dex athletics check. Uh, two successes. Depending on whether that succeeds or fails. If it fails, it would be a um, bloody fail or a messy fail. Or... Oh, a, br- a brutal fail. Uh, what is it? Bestial fail. Okay. Uh, you go to, to go and charge and run as she immediately turns and begins heading down the left-hand side of the hallway uh, as you gain a compulsion. Ooh. Uh, your compulsion is dominance. By all means, you need to control this woman. She needs to bend the knee. There's some shit going down. You're tired of having to hide in the shadows and essentially slink around to try to get this bullshit information. It's time someone, again, treated you with some goddamn respect, and if they're not going to give it to you, you're going to take it from them. While this is going on, I'm just going to make some quick checks for the other guards outside. One of the three people in the main harbor, essentially their chest splays open as Bo has sprung in the middle in her full lichen form and just rips open the chest cavity of this person. Second one, as they go to turn and shoot at Bo, uh, Richie just comes in with the one-armed side swipe and cuts the dude in two. Uh, the fourth one, uh, Wash, pops in, snags the guy from above, and just snaps the neck in one quick movement. Uh, at which point, uh, Nakano, as you're racing after them, Asher and Talison, you see the the guard who is at the breaker box now has their gun up and is heading and is very quickly beginning to move towards the doorway. Uh, now I'm going to shout, forget, and then I'm gonna and then I'm gonna try and shoot him in the head. Okay. Would you say that this guy is an unprepared mortal victim, considering considering he doesn't know that I'm about to wipe his mind? Uh, sadly, no. All right, you have to roll wits plus resolve. Uh, these guys do not have a lot of that. Uh, okay, still roll pretty good though. I mean, I don't have a lot to roll for this one. Yeah, my dice pull small for this one. Uh, three successes. Three successes. Uh. You shout forget at him as you're just like, it's kind of like a jack-in-the-box that you just pop out. Forget! Draw the pistol. The guy just turns with the gun trained at you uh, as you just pull the trigger. So please make a attack. Uh, So this will be dex plus firearms. And so for Talison, sorry. As he's shooting him in the head, I'm going to duck out. I'll just sort of roll out of cover. Just pistol back in the holster and sprint at him as fast as I can. Can I activate fleetness? Yes, you can. Make a rouse check. Success. So I'm going to activate fleetness and just rocket towards the guy. Just rolling out of cover and, and and sprinting towards him with my sword drawn as quickly as possible. Six successes on my firearms. Six successes. The bullet, you see he immediately ducks as the bullet just impacts the wall behind him. Uh, what is it? Gets up and begins to prepare as Talison... <laughs> shoots into him uh please make a let's see dex melee uh and add your dots and celerity yes okay this is the this has the potential to hurt uh five successes you immediately (coughs) impact into him slam the blade as the blade has mostly caught into the kevlar vest so it's gone in slightly, and you can feel it beginning to push into the or- into the uh, stomach before you get it on. And is currently holding it off uh, from you pressing any further. Uh, at which point, uh, Talison, I need you to please make a Dex Athletics check. Is this to defend? Yes. Once per turn, the user may also do this when defending with Dexterity plus Athletics. So I get to add my uh, celerity dice rolls to that as well. Wonderful. Uh, That is once again, five successes. Five successes, you take no damage. As goes for a pistol and tries to shoot you through the holster as you just like kind of half matrix style, just step backwards as the bullet and just impacts into one of the metal uh, cargo holds. Uh, You do hear 
uh, down near the center, three three pops. Uh, as you hear one large snarl just <laughs> uh, as the pops seem to be coming from uh, the upper layer uh, of the actual building and on the other side of the yard as well. Uh, at which point, Nakano, uh, you are inside uh, running down this hallway. You hit the T intersection uh, where you can see the woman in the khaki outfit has there's a door ahead of you and a door to the left on the left hand side she has dipped into the door on the left hand side uh seeming to lead into this larger room okay from my vantage point i i can't tell if there's anyone else in the room with her you cannot currently tell based on your position whether there are other people inside of that room okay uh the the door in front of me uh is there any way to tell if there's anyone in that room Make a wits awareness check. Five successes, one messy crit. Okay, Uh, so the door straight ahead, you can hear voices. You can hear what sounds like, just keep quiet, it's going to be all right. I thought you said that this place was secure. We can't keep working like this. I told you to shut up want to keep your life then keep quiet that's from the door ahead of you to the door to your left uh you can hear what sounds to be multiple sets of footsteps and you're beginning to hear a i am going to press myself flat next to the center door that i'm in front of and I'm going to use Cloak of Shadows to, like, re-obfuscate myself after all of that running around. Okay, you set yourself up in the corner. Please make a uh, deck stealth plus obfuscate. Okay, and and while I'm doing that, I want to have Talison's revolver in my hand ready to shoot. Uh, that'll be nine successes. Okay, you are invisible. For Talison and Asher, you guys uh, are currently like in, uh, Talison is currently in melee with this one uh, as both of you hear at the centermost section what sounds like like marching? Like a gate being opened. As Asher, from your perspective, you can look, and it looks like the dock doors to this uh, building have been opened. And we haven't seen any incendiary weapons yet, have we? You have not. Uh, The shots that have gone off uh, have not been incendiary in any way. Okay. With this guy, because I'm right on top of him, and I've basically got the sword partially partially through his vest, I'm going to whip out my pistol, put it to the side of his head, and just blow his head off. Okay, go for it. Uh, add a one die. Uh, just make it normally. You were considering whether to add a... Uh... Because you're holding him in place with the blade, and also your body because you're moving so fast, you're able to do this pretty nonchalantly. Normally this would be at a two dice penalty because he could just tilt his head uh, but based on your position and holding him, there's there's not any disadvantage from it. Uh, so this is just going to be firearms plus dex. Okay, that's... Uh, oh, three successes. Three successes. The gun <laughs> blows as the bullet passes through this guy's head and <laughs> he just immediately slumps <laughs> and hits the ground. Asher's going to move forward and like raise a hand for Talison to toss him the gun. Yeah, oh yeah. So I'll I'll um once this guy's down, I'll pull out my sword, um toss the submachine gun and any any ammo that I find to Asher. And I'm also going to take like a, a, if there's like a key cut on him and I'm going to take his radio and earpiece as well. Uh, you slip on the the earpiece as you hear from is it, you essentially hear through the comms. What have we got? Multiple targets. Contact outside. <sighs> Seem to be the fucking wolves. 
Do you need my assistance out there? Before you hear, don't worry, don't worry. I've got the mech up and running. We're going to see what this puppy can do. I'm going to uh, <laughs> turn around to um, to Asha and tell him they have a fucking mech. I'm going to check the bullet in the chamber real quick. I want to uh, like scratch off the side and taste it and see if I can tell if it's silver or if it's lead. Uh, it appears to be silver. Gotcha. I'll, I'll hide behind the opening door then to try to get the jump on this mech. Please make a deck stealth, yeah. That's two successes. I can't remember. Did he make any sound? The the guy that we just killed? Uh, not specifically. I'll stay through the mic. So what side are we on, by the way? Are we on the western side, eastern side? Uh, your guys' position is actually on the northern side. Uh, so I'm going to stay through the mic in a generic Canadian accent. Uh, target down, north, northern side is clear. Moving to sweep. Make a manipulation subterfuge check. Okay, that's three successes. They hear you conti- continue to speak uh, as you hear one of them go, Affirmative. Help towards center. I'll just I'll just respond with received uh, received approaching center, and then I'll I'll uh, sort of move up to where um, Asher is and just relay that. I'll just turned off my or you know pulled away my mic at that point, so they can't hear me. Uh, so Asher, from your position, you're hearing two sets of gunshots immediately above you, as you look over towards the three now fully formed guru in their full lycanthrope forms as the door opens you can see uh two sets of two more of these guards essentially begin aiming and shooting towards them as from the center a large exoskeleton mech steps forward almost in the shape of these lycanthrope guru you can see this metal exoskeleton has the woman in the khaki outfit these long metallic silver claws kind of set on either side as you can see her beginning to attempt to control and move towards them before and she's beginning to run towards them can I determine where the power source is on this thing? This is a prototype. Uh, you do see the power source is on the back. How exposed is the body? Is her body on this thing? Uh, on the front, there is a sheet, like a uh, what is it? You're not sure how well made it is. It looks like like bulletproof glass. Uh, Talison, if you want to take care of those two, uh, I can I can maybe deal with the mech. It is one of those days, isn't it? <laughs> See, it is indeed one of those days. Good luck, my friend. And, uh... I'll honor your deal if things don't go well. How much speed is the mech picking up? Uh, it's picking up a good amount of speed. <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> We're fighting a mech, Tyson, what the hell? <laughs> it's a, uh... What is it? It's, it's the... Scientist's... Uh, best attempt of fighting werewolves as of this moment. I'd like to try and slash open my palm and spray a bunch of uh, corrosive vitae just as the mech passes through. You let me know how many rouse checks you need me to make. How, how much do you want to do? I mean, I'm aiming for the power source in the back, but like each one is 35 centimeters. I guess I'll do four of them four okay please make four rouse checks i'm not gonna fail all four of them critical success 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 one fail one fail your hunger goes up by one uh but i will need you to please make hmm like a cult blood sorcery or something make it uh resolve blood sorcery yeah, how much blood have you have you like dripped out today? I've 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 got one in the vial, four on the fence, and four and at another the mech. Four. Yeah, it, I'm I'm getting I'm getting hangry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, this is maybe my biggest ice pool ever though. Five. 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 Five.
five successes. You, as it's just a burst of this acidic, blackish liquid that coats the back of the mech, as you watch it begins to eat through the protective outside shell, as it begins to dig into what looks to be the battery section, uh, you see that the right arm entirely uh, goes limp, as one of the legs also just kind of full stops underneath it as it begins to hobble slightly. Uh, as Talison from on the earpiece, you hear, Shit! Shit! I thought you said that this was gonna work! What? What is it? The mech. It's breaking down! From the shooting, you do watch as Richie, who is the brownish wear re uh, red werewolf, you can see that there are two holes that have kind of skinned over the collarbone. Uh, as you see, the white werewolf has a massive hole blown through her chest. As you can see, she's like staggering <coughs> and begins to begin to pull away from the action. At which point, Rich is going to go straight for the mech. Okay, you watch as Rich goes up, uh, just this one-handed uh, guru, <coughs> speed runs up slices the front, looks at the back where you essentially sprayed all the Vitae from your hand, digs his hand in, pulls out the battery cell. As it <laughs> pops open, the mech <laughs> essentially powers down. As you see the figure on the inside <laughs> pops the window open goes to reach for a gun before you see Richie just puts his claw on her head. All sides of her head just <coughs> crush together as ooze explodes from all sides of her skull and she just slumps forward in the seat. Uh, you also hear from above a <coughs> sound as you hear what sounds like a snarling before a body just suddenly drops <coughs> and hits the ground with a splat as you see someone has had their throat torn out before just being dropped the two stories from above. Afterwards, Nakano, you are very quiet, just hanging out in the corner as you hear, you hear from the other side of the door, fuck this, as you hear two sets of footsteps moving forward. Don't wait around. If you can't escape otherwise, Pray. And the door <laughs> opens uh, as you see the man with what looks to be the army uh, haircut and the leather jacket step out, uh, as well as a second figure. As you can see, uh, shaggy red, uh, reddish brown hair kind of on the top, uh, tallish but almost like like <laughs> best way I can describe it is almost not Nosferatu looking. Clearly human, but sickly, very tall and lanky, kind of walking side by side with, with each other. As you see, the tall one kind of looks to the other. <laughs> it's been a while since I've had a chance like this one. <laughs> Do you think that'll taste good? As you hear the other one say, let's just deal with this. As you see the, the tallish one, suddenly begin to expand, but not like anything you've ever seen before. The skin is leathery, black. The eyes grow beyond the proportions of the face, these huge, huge red orbs, these teeth that come out like, almost like, like vampire bat fangs. The entire body is this just leathery bl black husk with the bones protruding from the inside. As you just see this black, like, what almost looks to be like saliva or juice just spreading down its face. As it goes through the door just beside you. Uh, it is just going to make quick sense here. Uh, as you see the door beginning to open, the one stops. Kind of raises his head up. <laughs> There's one in here. 
as they both just stop. Really? Corpse walkers. <laughs> I never thought of that. Where are you, bloodsucker? Come on. No need to hide. We're on the same team. Kind of motions to the tall one. Go outside. Look, the... The one that already transformed begins to... Push out through the door as the one with the leather jacket just kind of... Just continues to sniff around the space. I think I know what this is. I can't remember the name for it, but I think I know what this is. Uh, they told us last session, but I don't think I wrote it down. Oh, right, uh, Black Spiral Dancers or something, right? Yes, thank you. Uh, as soon as the big, the transformed one steps out, I would like to... I'll, I'll, I'll have to drop Cloak of Shadows, rush forward, take one of the one of Talison's knives, and I would like to run up and try to slash his throat. Okay. Make your attack dex plus melee. That's three successes, and when I use a willpower, I need to make another rouse check, correct? Nope, that's only blood surge. Uh, you, you go up, go to swing down with the knife as your hand gets caught. <laughs> As the blade is about to pierce into the side of his clavicle, he just holds your hand in place and just turns. Really? Working with them? Kind of pathetic, don't you think? At which point the mouth just goes into this wider and wider smile as the black sinewy teeth and the red eyes begin to expand outwards. As Asher and Talison. You are outside. Any any chance any chance Asher gets a premonition as this is happening? Roll for premonition. Uh, is it a free one or do you want me to do a rouse check? It's going to be a free one. Uh, give yourself two extra dice because you're in a high stress situation. So with these with these black spiral dancers, uh, did we know much about their composition? Because I haven't written anything in my notes about them. Uh, we know that they are guru that are somehow corrupted. Uh, you were just given a description. Corrupted guru, okay. Shit. Alright, that's three successes for three successes for premonition. As you are preparing the gun, you go to aim down the sights before you're hit with this sudden pulse as you just begin to see darkness this endless just twist it almost looks like a tornado this black thick smoke spinning into nothing as you can see as you expand out with these black teeth as you can see nakano's head just bleeding severed from the rest of his body just hang hanging there from the uh from his teeth do i get any sense of whether he's inside or not uh, you did watch Nakano enter. Anyone who is proficient with occult? Or occult academics? Yeah, I'd say between those two, if you want to make a intelligence check, intelligence occult, uh, you can, you can do so. I got five successes on my occult check. You know, as being the person who most wants to unify all of the cultures of the world of darkness together, you have read somewhat on the essentially belief system of the Guru populace. In Guru society, uh, there are three essentially major figures that have influenced how the world was created. There is the wilds, which is essentially the natural world. There's the weaver, who is the one who makes order out of those that wildness. Uh, the wild is a form of chaos, but it's a form of chaos that is meant to uh, create possibility. So the weaver is the one who creates order from it. 
The last one is the worm. The worm essentially is the destruction of the wild as a means of the wild being able to create more. So it's the natural death of something. However, especially recently, with essentially the rise out of like industrialization and other major commercial success kind of being born out of like around 1850s, the worm has corrupted uh, the weaver, which has essentially made things worse for the wilds. It's meant to be destruction of the wilds and what is supposed to be a good thing. So constant building, expansion, colonialism, all of these things has led to the weaver and the worm becoming so tangled together that now the wilds and everything that we know as a positive means of our environment has become extremely uh, out of whack, but also it has put it in danger. The Guru believe themselves to be the defenders of the wild, the actual essence of the spirit of the wild come to pass. Dream, uh, you're not sure what the relationship of dark spiral dancers are. However, you do remember that Bo said that they are like you. What you think that this means is that Guru see vampires or kindred as children of the worm. You are an extension of those things like colonialism and expansionism. Like this, this fourth of yes, but I assume that uh, kindred are seen as a unnatural part of the worm as it's not a natural passing of death it's a uh, a twisting of that exactly that that is another big portion of it so when they say they're like you that means that these might be guru from the worm all right i i <laughs> i i know nakano is in danger i'm going to sprint in uh so you turn to run inside uh, through through the bay doors as Asher, you immediately become face to face with this thing that you just saw in your vision. As you see this tall bat-like creature coming forward, I I unload the full clip of the submachine guns, silver bullets into it. Go for it. So uh, make your Dex plus firearms, and because this is an automatic weapon. If there's any blank dice that you don't like, the same as willpower, you can choose to re-roll them. Oh my god. Oh, that was such a bad roll. Okay. Five successes, including a messy critical. Okay. Uh, you unload the clip... In, into it, but you just watch as the, as the bullets just seem to clink, 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 as this form is able to mostly dodge out of the way as the sizzling effect seems to cause certain parts of the flesh to sizzle slightly uh, but you you think that more the problem is less that they're immune to this they seem like the minor parts that have hit it definitely seem to have hurt it a lot you just don't think that you hit it mostly or hit it in the right spots while he's doing that because i didn't get a chance to go after those um those two guys can i also break from hiding and, and just engage this this dude that is five successes uh you flip the blade grab the guy by the back of the head and just slip it right in uh right at the base of his neck pops out the other side and shush, rip to the side as the jugular gets sliced in two and the body just poof, hits the ground. Once I've gone through his neck and, and offed him, uh, can I just let out like just a huge raw shout, like battle cry thing to try and intimidate slash distract as many people around me as possible? Okay. Uh, I'll allow you to make a charisma intimidation check plus your presence. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. That's going to get close to all my dice. Um... Uh, 
That's nine successes. For effect, for effect, can I just have, have, uh, you know, sort of quickly nommed the guy on the neck before doing that, so I've got, like, blood running down the, running down my mouth and neck as I'm sort of sword in one, yep, as I've got sword in one hand, gun in the other, and just, like, roaring. As you've held the sword and slit the guy's throat, you just take a bite into his neck and just, just have this huge gout all across your lips as it turns to the others and the others are just standing there just wide-eyed. It's clear that they were expecting one sort of enemy. They were not expecting this kind of enemy. At which point you watch as uh, Rich, uh, for Talison, you watch as Richie <laughs> runs into the garage as Asher, you begin to just like begin to go and reload the clip as the figure looks towards you. As suddenly there's a flash above you as you see Richie has leapt over top of you and has embedded himself onto the black spiral dancer as they both begin to uh, swing at each other. Uh, and, and the black spiral dancer you see in front of you, Asher, is already looking awful. Uh, as Richie is beginning to slice into its hide. Uh, as the one up above, uh, Wash rips them to pieces. Uh, then Bo. Uh, Bo is going to. Bo pops out from her hiding spot and. Uh, the one that was in front of you just gets cut into two different pieces. They are going to make resolve checks again. Uh, okay. There are three guards remaining. Uh, not including the Black Spiral Dancer. They are looking shaky and not pleased to be there. Is is he also terrified or is, is he like a bit... Um, d distracted to be, to be terrified from that? Seeing... As you kind of turn and see how horrendous this creature looks... You get the sense it would be really hard to frighten this creature. Yeah, fair. <laughs> fair enough. As the Black Spiral Dancer takes a huge bite out of Richie's arm and begins to s essentially begin to skin down his arm as Richie... <laughs> then at which point, for Nakano... Nakano, I need you to please make a Dexterity Athletics check. Uh, that's five successes. Ooh, five successes. Okay. That's very good. Uh, you take one point. Oh, actually, sorry. You take two points of aggravated damage. As this one bites into your arm and begins to tear into your flesh. As there's this awful burning in your shoulder. As you can feel this creature's saliva beginning to etch and scar deeper and deeper into your undead body. Uh... This thing ain't pretty, as this figure fully sprouts out into its leathery hide, bony-like protrusions. Uh, and yeah. At which point, uh, it goes to Nakano. All right, I'm so I still have my arm gripped by this dude, right? From where he caught me. Uh, your hand, yes. Okay. Uh, in which case, if he's holding me. Because I still have Talison's gun in my other hand, I am going to take it. How how high above me is his head? Uh, you're looking up at him. Maybe two feet taller than you. Two feet taller. Okay. I mean, yeah, I've already got the gun in my hand. I am going to point it and try to aim for. I'm gonna try and aim for the eyes. Go for it. Make that shot. Uh, so that's dex plus firearms. Uh, yes. Uh, it is at a two die penalty because you are within melee. Uh, I don't get anything for it being like right up close. Damn. In that case, can I drop the gun and instead draw ma the machete from my back and slash at him with that? Okay. Okay, so that's, uh, that's four successes. Four successes. 
you swing down again with the machete as it kind of hits against the hide, but it doesn't dig into it. It just kind of slides against it as you just hear from the voice, you're choosing the wrong side. Just let me show you what we can do. Perhaps you'll have a change of heart. Asher and Taliesin. All right, I'm going to get the guy, so yeah, rush the guy closest to me. Attack and just attack him, almost as if like I'm just trying to run past him and just slice him in half as I keep going. There are, there are two more humans that are near you. Uh, one seems to be a scout on uh, a little bit further away. Oof. Uh, that wasn't great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my willpower. <laughs> uh, and re-roll a big chunk of my dice pool. Because I only got two successes. Uh, that's much better. Okay. So that is two, four, six successes. Six successes. You... <laughs> as the guy just slumps into two pieces as your lightning fast movement has essentially dragged the blade through his body. The other one standing nearby goes to draw a gun as Bo appears from behind, swipes underneath the legs and slashes downwards, cutting, slicing the dude into three different sections. Uh, as Bo looks to you, kind of blood soaked and just breathing heavy nods to you, looks towards the black spiral dancer, and then begins to charge forwards uh, to help Richie. I I call out to you, Roy's in trouble inside, and I'm going to reload the clip and like get around this black spiral dancer to try to get inside. I'm going to sort of give her a nod, a wink, and a smile, and just keep, keep powering, like not even stopping moving. I'm just going to keep blasting inside as, as quick as I possibly can to try and reach Roy. Okay. Uh, and what, uh, at which point, the both of you are able to pass through the door. Uh, I suppose just a brief description of what this section looks like as you've been fighting in it. Uh, it is a loading bay. There are multiple crates all over the place. Uh, you can see that there is one section where it looked like the mech power source was located. Uh, you can see on the far side of the room, there's multiple different crates that are sta- uh, that are raised to the top, uh, where you can also see uh, racks and racks of gun cabinets have been set up, locked, uh, and look like they are being prepared for dis- distribution. As you guys run up these stairs and push through the door, you see another one of these black spiral dancers standing over top of Nakano as Nakano is attempting to slash with the machete uh, upwards towards this creature uh, as you both appear in the space. Could I tell if any of that ammunition was incendiary? Make a wits awareness check. Two successes. Two successes. Right now, Asher, you're not able to to distinguish. You're just too focused on... Uh, getting to Roy. So this is a this is a loading bay, and you mentioned there are wooden pallets, and if the, it's a multi-rack situation, then uh, there must be a forklift. Do I see a forklift anywhere? Yes, you do. You, you actually see two. Uh, oh, two. Great. Can I uh, hop in one? Are the keys in there? Uh, they are. Great. I'd love to spear the Black Spiral Dancer on the forklift forklift. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, please make a make a dex plus drive check. Not not technology. Mm, sadly, technology is a little different. Um, and just clarifying for Asher, are you going for the one inside the loading bay or are you going for the one in the hallway? I'm going for the one that's fighting Nakano. Okay, so that's in the hallway. How high is your tech? Has how high is your technology? It's just a one. What's higher, your wits or your intelligence? Oh, intelligence is higher. To get up uh, the stairs into the next section, the, like the these things are not designed to go into the hallway. We're going to see if we can Kool-Aid man your way through the wall. Yeah, fuck it. We got it. We got it, right? I can't nod at this point. Oh my god. I'd like to enchant the forklift with my beautiful voice. 
Man, the new Fast and Furious movie was really weird, huh, guys? <laughs> Willpower. And that turned into four successes. You look, you kind of, kind of, kind of uh, similar to how when you smack the bottom underneath the steering wheel of a car, you're able to hotwire it with the wires there. You kind of trace out, find a small panel, pop it open, look through it and find a speed regulator, which you tear out of the side of it, wrapping the wires together as the forklift. You're not sure how fast this thing will go. Uh, so now please make a dexterity drive check. This is the one I'm going to blood surge on. Uh, four successes. As Nikano, you are slamming the machete into the side of this creature as it's looking down towards you. It's massive black teeth. There's a lot you could learn from us. Really. Do you even like these pesky, disgusting wolves? Before you hear a as through the drywall of the wall, a full forklift <laughs> bursts through as one of these metal snakes slams into the side of the creature. As you just see Asher at the wheel, having pushed the essentially forward throttle as far as he can, as the wheels underneath it are just spinning as fast as possible, as, Nick, as Asher is just holding on for dear life, trying to essentially just pinning this creature against the side wall. Uh, Asher, Asher shouts, Asher shouts, kill it, kill it. Nakano doesn't say anything, but he feels very proud. Uh, would it have like shocked the, the, the dancer enough to let go of my hand? Definitely. Okay. Uh, can I, I'm going to climb up onto the top of the forklift and I'm going to pull out the, uh, like a big kitchen chopping knife from Talison's kitchen. And I would like to try and plunge it, uh, either into the, I'm going to make a definitive statement. I'm going to try and plunge it into the spiral dancer's eye from like, from like above. Uh, please make a dex melee check. Bitch. Uh, I'm gonna willpower four of those, uh, five of those six dice. Uh, that is four successes. Uh, as you slam the knife into the skull of, into the eye of this creature, you're like, uh, as it just angry begins to pull it out of the side of its, uh, face. Uh, it's pissed. Um, at which point, from the hole in the wall, you see a, a leap as the gray wolf has now leapt inside and takes a bite out of the side of the black spiral dancer before the back black spiral dancer just backhands it off to the side. Uh, at which point, uh, the black spiral dancer is first going to attempt to push the uh, is going to push the forklift off of it. Uh, and it really fails. Jesus Christ. Uh, it is then going to, because it's the only one it can reach with it, is going to attempt to swipe at Nakano. Nakano, I need you to make a dex athletics check. Dex athletics, okay. Oh, shit. That's, uh five successes you take no damage as you duck underneath the claw as it swings over top of you you're all now in the same space so it's all three of your turns i would like to hold the wheel in place with my knee and unload another clip into this thing okay how's it looking in terms of general wellness it's still looking all right the forklift and the knife don't seem to do as much damage as you guys might be hoping with them uh, the skin is beginning to heal a little bit faster than usual. Uh, aside from that, it seems to be standing. I'm going to... I'll, I want to do a couple of things. Let me know if I can. So, I'm blasting through at a million miles an hour. Can I, before I hit him, uh, roar out again and see if I can 
put Daunt on it? Uh, you can. That would be your main, like, quote-unquote action for this turn. Okay, right. Okay, in that case. That, that's okay. Um, I'm going to uh, blast through. See if I can just chop off uh, one of its hands. Dex, Mally, Celerity. Uh, Asher. Four successes for Asher. Uh, as you unload the clip, you watch as the bullets Im- impact and begin to sizzle and burn. <sighs> uh, definitely took that hit and did not like it. And for Talison? Th- this guy's losing that arm. I got ten successes. Holy shit. Uh, so Talison, how do you want to do this? Okay, so in that case, as I'm... Um... As I'm moving in, like I can see how how uh, bad he's looking. I'm gonna go for the arm and remove his arm, and then as I as I'll, and I'll spin around, and then as seeing how ugly he looks, I'm like, get your hands off my friends, you bastard! Boom, and just remove his head, straight clean. As you slice through the arm, the arm begins profusing this black viscous fluid. As you see the body beginning to shift and change back down into his human form as being pushed up against the wall he goes as he reaches out to try to swipe at Nakano one last time the blade impacts against the side of the neck and cuts like butter as the head just and rolls onto the ground Uh, I'm gonna jump down from the top of the forklift uh, give both Asher and Talison a, a grateful pat on the back each like sort of silently thanking them for saving my ass. And then I am going to use something I've never used before. I'm going to use Mask of a Thousand Faces. Make a rouse check. Success. I'm going to try and change my face into that of just sort of the vibe I've been getting off of these Black Spiral Dancers because I'm not dressed in any sort of military uniform or anything. I'm, like, in civilian clothes, so I want to look like I am one of these seeming Black Spiral um, mercenaries. I'm going to sort of point to the dead Spiral Dancer, and I'm going to point down the left-hand corridor to where the woman went. And I'm going to say, Another one. Down there. With my mask, I'm going to ready my machete and I'm gonna knock on the the center door as you prepare yourself knocking towards the door you all feel this moment of like brief flashes in the peripheral of your vision as you see Richie and Bo enter in their lupus forms the red and white wolf Uh, You can see Wash, the gray wolf, sinks down into their lupus form as well. As all six of you go towards the center door, machete in hand, as you reach and turn the doorknob, that is where we'll end it for today. Thank you, everyone, for listening. First, uh, well, actually, sorry, not true. First full session of just straight combat. All right, is there anything people would like to plug? Drink some coffee. Go get your uh, go. You get your coronavirus vaccines if you can. Uh, I will second Brenton. Go and get your vaccines. Uh, it protects you from COVID and also vampires. They they just hate the stuff. Uh, as always, October Jones and Fish with Legs season one is available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, and on our own website, octoberandfish.com, as well as many other places where good podcasts are found check it out it's a very fun all ages appropriate time well as always uh make sure to check out uh this podcast as well as other great content at the bag of loot at the bag of uh if you have any board game needs make sure to check out three kings loot at three kings loot.com as well as the downtown location here in montreal well with all that out of the way thank you so much for listening and we'll catch you next time The story, all names, characters, and incidents portrayed in this production are fictitious. No identification with actual persons, living or deceased, places, buildings, and products is intended or should be inferred. Thank you for listening.